Hey, hey everyone, it's Erin, and today I'm replicating this lovely piece of concept art from Cinderella made by Mary Blair originally. And I have my primary set of gouache. I've got some lids here, some water, some paintbrushes, flathead, some paintbrushes round, and of course my Series 7 brush. Um, starting off with primary yellow, black, primary cyan, primary white, and my red here, my true red. And I'm putting just a little speck of black into that yellow and you get this really nice sort of pea soup green and adding uh, a little bit of cyan into that as well. And yeah, it was like this, what is this color? It reminds me of something. And then it occurred to me, it reminds me of the exorcist. And if you know, you know. Um, I wanted to mention before I forget, I will be hosting Zoom classes this summer where we will be painting replicants together. We'll be doing uh, concept art from Mary Blair and from Ivan Earl. It's a six week course, two hours a week. There are two different time slots to choose from. I'll put the link in my description below. It'll be really fun, a lot of fun. We'll be going through um, step by step how to recreate these uh, beautiful pieces of concept art, not this piece, but surprise pieces you find out once you sign up. Um, anyway, back to the painting. So today this is in real time. Uh, so you can see how quickly I'm working. I'm doing the background very quickly. I'm not really worrying about these streaks that you see. I don't like to go over my brush strokes too many times because if you go wet over wet with gouache, you tend to pick up the first layer and I want it to be nice and smooth. So I don't really worry about the look of the first coat. The second coat is where we get a nice uh, flatter, more opaque finish. So this mixture has just a, a tiny bit more water than the next coat will have. So you always start with a more watered down coat and it gets thicker as you go, but you still want it to be nice and creamy so that it's smooth as you uh, paint it across your page or your illustration board in this case. And now I'm creating the second coat and I'm making it a little bit more of a blue green, more cyan in there, uh, and less of that exorcist pea soup green. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I'm just making sure that I mix in all of my paint so that it's a really even color, tiny bit of water at a time until it's that melted ice cream consistency, and adding, as you can see, just a, a small amount of red to tone down the saturation. And now bringing in the second coat and doing it, you know, quickly enough uh, that things aren't drying on me and I can get a smoother finish. And I should have used a larger brush. I am using uh, too small of a brush here, but I don't like mixing with big brushes. And I also <laughs> am using really small lids. So, yeah. But here's uh, the picture, the reference. And you can see that it's darker in the bottom corners and along the top in the sky behind the clouds there. And this is lovely because it really creates a sense of light coming from those magical swooshes from the magic wand to the pumpkin. Um, and yeah, just a, it draws our eye to Cinderella, this sort of lightness around her and gives us a sense of light and shadow. So just looking at that, um, knowing that I need to keep the first coat sort of showing through where it's lighter there at the center of the composition. Um, yeah, creating a, a, a another coat here. And this time I go a little too dark. It's a little too dark. So you'll see how I'll, I'll lighten that up in a moment. And it's, you know, the cool thing about gouache, especially acrylic gouache, is if you are not happy with the color that you choose, you can always paint over it once it's dry. And so right away I saw that that was too dark. I'm like, okay, it's way too dark. So just making, um, a slightly higher value version of that green and higher value means adding a bit of white to it so you can see it's just a little bit lighter there and this is the third coat now right so now I'm starting to cover up some of the streakiness I'm allowing just a tiny bit of that background to come through and I have to apologize because <laughs> this time my camera was closer than usual so it really has a hard time focusing in and out or yeah there's a bit of a little bit of uh, weird focusing going on. I'll figure it out eventually. Uh, now I'm creating the mixture to do some of the foliage. So I added a bit more black to that original green color that I mixed and then um, more water so that it's smoother. But 
as I'm painting this, I'm realizing these lines are way too thick. Like I'm pressing too hard. So I'm getting a thicker lines than I want and it looks kind of clunky, not stoked about it. So I decide at around this point, cause I'm like, oh, and they're overlapping and the whole thing is just bugging me. Didn't dig it. So I decided that I should probably paint over it, which happens. Um, and I thought I'd leave this in so you can see, sometimes I screw things up to the point where I'm just like, no, I gotta paint over it. So I waited for them to dry, which took a lot of patience. <laughs> I was like really impatient um, with this, but I, I paint over it. You'll see right there, done. Um, yeah, and this, I, I love these pieces from Cinderella. I think, you know, I always, I'm always like, oh, this is my favorite piece of concept art. This is not my favorite piece of concept art, but it's a simple one to do. And so I chose it because I could slow things down so you could see things in real time without it taking a lot of time. So this painting in total took me about an hour to do. And the video is only a half an hour because, of course, I cut out things like um, getting clean water and, uh, you know, just little parts that you really don't need to see. Uh, but yeah, this the work that she did for that Mary Blair did for Disney Cinderella, uh, really special. And some of the artists that worked with her were impressed with the way that she was able to use her sort of sophisticated um, classical painting techniques that she had learned before working at Disney and how she incorporated a more childlike look to her work but it was like anything but childlike because the technique behind it was uh, was so solid so I think that's what's one of the things that's really special about Mary Blair's style is that although it seems simple and again childlike it's it's actually very technically sophisticated and her color palettes and the way she's using the paint the way she layers the paint um, is just brilliant okay so now here we go with a much softer touch and I decided to instead of using my da Vinci I think it's a number two brush I went back to my <laughs> my old <laughs> my old ratty Winsor Newton series seven number I think this is a number six or a number four. It looks more like a number four, but it's definitely a better brush to use because the tip is so pointy. And then I just eased up on the pressure. I'm like barely touching um, the page. And as always, holding my paintbrush super, super close to the bristles to get those, those details in. And then rolling my brush. So this technique, it's it's interesting. I've, I have uh, students that I teach privately and I noticed that that technique is harder than I think it is. It's, I mean, it must have been hard for me when I first did it, but rolling your brush to get a really fine tip, um, it takes a little finesse and a little bit of practice. So if you try it and it's not working and it's frustrating, just give yourself some time because, you know, after 10,000 hours of rolling your brush on a palette, you will get a nice fine tip. And I'm joking, of course, it's not going to take you, it's not going to take you 10,000 hours. You don't need to master this technique, uh, just getting comfortable with rolling your brush. Although it's not good for the brush, I don't think, I think that's part of why my brush is so ragged, but I have had it for, I don't know, like five years now, four or five years. Okay, so yeah, doing these, uh, more of this foliage that Mary Blair is so well known for. Um, that we see today in tons of illustration work, um, children's books and animation. Um, and it really seems to have started with Mary Blair. I've been looking into this more because I was curious if it was her or Ivan that came up with this sort of look. And she seems to be the first. Ivan is the first to do the trees, those very stylized trees. But this is more of a, a Mary signature signature thing, these, these um, stylized trees plants that creep up around the composition um, often coming in from the top of the composition as well just giving a really lovely frame sort of a vignette of foliage uh, in this piece it's minimal there's only a few a few plants around the bottom this is a really minimal piece overall uh, but a lot of these pieces that she did for Cinderella I, I like to think of how they're you know this is the first time anyone saw any kind of visual um, concepts for the film you know she really was pulling out of the air um, and I think that's pretty cool okay so here we're doing 
the vines from the pumpkin that are magically turning into the wheels of the of the pumpkin coach right so this is like in the transition this is while things are morphing from um from just vines into uh, a man-made structure <laughs> it's a fancy way of saying things are changing very rapidly and and so these swoosh lines um which I think we're pretty successful. I feel like hers have hers have more um, sort of an animated feeling to them. They they feel more alive the way she placed her vines. Uh, but either way, I think I did an okay job. I know now that when I'm doing these sort of expressive, smooth, ribbony lines, to really just go for it, be confident. I can always kind of fix them up after, which is not ideal. It's better to just go in one in one go. Um, now I'm putting in the shadows so this is a tough thing to do because I find that with Mary's work I'm I'm guessing she did shadows before she'd put in the actual um, elements that have shadows which seems sort of counterintuitive but they rest underneath the feet or the object that's casting the shadow so she had to put those in first and if she didn't she's like a master at adding those in next but I like to put them in first um, and you could see that I, I moved the illustration board downwards so that it was uh, so that I could do those strokes sort of um, moving down the picture plane towards me, which gives a smoother stroke. Although I did kind of make one of them a little wonky. But that's OK. I'm all about the wonkiness. Look at, yeah, the bottom one there coming from sort of the reins or the wheels is a little bit uneven, but that's OK. We won't we won't be upset about that. Creating the cloud color, this is uh, white with the primary cyan and some yellow, making this really lovely sort of robin's egg blue, slightly on the green side, almost like a Tiffany's, a Tiffany's box blue. Yeah, maybe, just with a little bit more green. You know me, I love to name my colors. <laughs> love to categorize everything. Um, yeah, a little speck in there. Okay, so making these clouds, this is so fun. I love doing this because basically it's about pressure. So you start with a light pressure and then thick and then a little swoosh with your wrist. See? Doink. Um, <laughs> and of course, the sound effect is super important. You need to doink when you do these. So here we go. And doink. Okay. So pulling the brush so that it's got this nice fine tip. And again, pressure. There we go. These lovely swoosh clouds. And uh, yeah, I, that's a, another good tip that I've mentioned before, but I'll mention again, is really allowing your brush to create shapes instead of outlining shapes and then filling them in, um, using the brush itself, the brush stroke to create a mark more than a shape. Um, or it is creating a shape, but more than outlining a shape and filling it, you're using the brush to make that shape. And then taking off the excess here because I want a little bit of a dry brush effect. Um, sort of layering the clouds to give a, a slightly darker color underneath. And then as you can see, I added a bit more white uh, to the mixture, taking off the excess and just going over top. And it just gives a little bit of depth just to have that slightly darker color underneath. And there we go. And now we're gonna add the white to the clouds, this nice highlight. So I didn't add any extra water because I did want this to be a bit drier and I'm going to go the other way now because I want it to um, to have a sort of a more rough tip running out at the end there. So if I drag it down towards me, it is a little bit easier and then I try doing it the other way just to sort of suss out which way works better. And it did work better when I was dragging it towards me. But sometimes I just flip things around um, so that everything doesn't look exactly the same too to get a variation on the brush stroke on the dry brush effect it's sort of like when you use digital media if any of you are familiar with you know procreate or, or the adobe suite if you're using a brush and it's like a rough sort of textured brush you kind of want to flip that brush around you want to change the angle of the brush so that it's not giving you the exact same stroke over and over again which looks pretty boring and very digital so that, that's another little tip now I'm adding, this is ultramarine blue that I'm adding in with the white. So ultramarine blue is 
uh, very different from cyan in that it's a much warmer blue. So cyan is a cooler blue. It's cyan's closer to yellow or wait. <laughs> oh no. Oh brain, brain, what are you doing? Okay, I always do this. This is a classic Aaron. Cyan is a warm, no, cyan is a cool blue because it's closer to green and ultramarine is a warm blue which is closer to purple and to the red side. Yeah, sure. The color wheel, man. It's a wheel. It always ends up going in the, <laughs> it's a wheel. <laughs> it's not, yeah, okay. But ultramarine blue with white is uh, going to give us this, the color of the, um, the fairy godmother's outfit, her cloak, her, I think of it as like a magical moo moo. I love it. With the hood, it's adorable. I actually, my mom made a cloak almost exactly like this um, for my stepdad for Halloween. <laughs> One year he went as a warlock and his name was Warwick. So it was pretty cool. He was Warwick the warlock. And my mom, I can't remember what she dressed up as, but I love that cloak. It was this exact color. And then I wore it one year and I went as um, a level five magic user, <laughs> which is just was an excuse to just wear the cloak and dress up like a cute elf. All right, rolling my brush here to get a nice tip, 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 and a little bit of extra there to give my second coat. So with most um, elements, you will need to do two coats of gouache. You can see it's really making a difference there. Um, creating that opaque finish so you can't see the green behind and yeah gouache is amazing this way because you can do a whole background and then paint right over it and uh, yeah when I realized that it kind of blew my mind and changed the game getting rid of, rid of some crumbs there and using the shape of my brush see the shape of my brush creates that hood and if you look closely, I did go wet over wet a little bit on the chest part of her cloak and I picked up some paint underneath and so it looks a little bit um, uneven there, but I don't think I fixed it. I think I just left it. So this, now I've added a tiny bit of black and I'm doing the shadow on her cloak, but I did not wait for it to dry completely so it didn't doesn't really show up the way it should. Um, at this point, I was like, oh, I want to get this done so that it's not a, um, you know, so that I could do it all in one sitting, basically. So I did get a little impatient. Now for the white inside of the cloak, like for her face and her hands, um, I'm using just the primary white and a little, little bit of that blue in there because there is... Um, almost like a slight glow to her skin tone and I think this just adds to the magic that it's not just straight up white or peach it just it has a slight bit of blue to it and she's she's an old lady so <laughs> maybe that's part of it I don't know she's magic she's the fairy godmother did anyone else grandma look like the fairy godmother because my when I was a little kid I thought my grandma was the fairy godmother I was like that looks exactly like my grandma like kind of chubby, cute, short with white hair and like the cute little button nose. That was my grandma. A hundred percent. And she actually wore this color blue a lot of the time. I think that was like an old lady color back in, you know, the 70s and 80s. She used to wear polyester pants of this color and white nurse shoes. <laughs> Does anyone else have a grandma like that <laughs> or had a grandma like that? Oh, so cute. Okay, now we're doing um, Cinderella's skin tone. So this is what we're going to start with. Before doing her dress or, or her hair, we start with her torso, like her head, neck, and shoulders, her little arms. And so it's white with a small amount of true red, a small amount of um, yellow. I'm trying not to say a little bit of because that started to <laughs> trip me out because whenever I'm like a little bit of this color, a little bit of that, it just... Sounds like one whole word stops making sense to me. Anywho, um, doing the head, remembering that her hair is going to be there. So her head's sort of this like half circle or half oval and her cute arms to do. <laughs> I love her pose here. It's very, it's very sweet. Now I'm adding... Uh, black to white because I'm going to do the mice because I'm going to let Cinderella dry. We got to let her dry off. 
she's she's not ready for a second coat so doing these mice and I realized I was like oh this is a bit too dark but these mice are so cute another great example of simple shapes um, coming together to make a recognizable object or a recognizable animal which are these super cute mice I could have used a smaller brush for the tail or yeah less pressure but that's okay And I realized just now that these are the mice that will be magically changed into the footman and the, <laughs> what else, the guy, like the guy driving the, um, the pumpkin, <laughs> the pumpkin driver. <laughs> um, yeah, but they, these mice become like her helpers for the evening. And I think one of them even has like mice, like buck teeth, like a mouse. Am, am I remembering this correctly? It's been a long time since I've seen Cinderella. I feel like I have to revisit it sometime soon. Um, it's so good. It's so good. And this actually Cinderella is um, a, a really nice example of Mary Blair's work truly coming through the final piece, like her color combinations, her compositions, the the expanse of rooms, like some of the rooms that are in the movie. Um, yeah, it's like you can see almost directly from the concept art, which was important to Disney because he was always frustrated that concept art would sort of get lost throughout the production. But um, but he was a huge fan of Mary's like he was her biggest supporter and her, her biggest fan. And so he was really, you know, pretty adamant about a lot of her ideas getting through um, to the final movie. Oh, there's some sawing going outside, uh, going on outside. I don't know if you can all hear that, but construction. Um, yeah, back to the mice. We're putting these little highlights. So this is a lovely touch. Again, showing the light and dark of the area. I mean, the mice, I think, did they have some white on their chest? No, I think they were all straight up gray. But um, this light here, just these little bits of white to show that they're facing the magical brightness <laughs> that's going on um, and now adding her her cute her cute blonde locks and uh, yeah that, the lovely little bun her low hanging bun <laughs> low hanging buns <laughs> some people will relate to that um, <laughs> I don't think I have low hanging buns I just have flat buns but anyway, we, we won't talk about my buns anymore. We'll, we'll get back to the painting. Just checking if her dress is dry, which it is, so I can do a second coat here. And uh, yeah, painting white over top of any color, pretty much, unless it's a really light color, is tough to do. I think this took me three or four coats, but I, I don't, I think I cut out me doing coat after coat. Um, and the little extra here for her feet. She's barefoot barefoot and, and pregnant. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm just letting it, I'm winging it. Um, she was not pregnant. <laughs> Cinderella was, she, it would have been a teenage pregnancy because she was a teen. She had, she, she, she's, never mind. <laughs> oh, the shadows for the mice. Forgot to put those in before. So see, now I'm now I'm trying to do, maybe Mary Blair did do Shadows After because I'm doing it and she was a far better painter than I am. So um, maybe do the Shadows After. I don't know. It seems like for the Fairy Godmother and for Cinderella, though, it really wouldn't have worked as nicely to do the Shadows After. Um, now we're doing the pumpkin, pumpkin time. And this pumpkin is, you know, orange. <laughs> so we're using red and yellow, red. And I think I used some of the peach mixture, like that uh, Cinderella skin tone mixture underneath as well, just to add in some of the value, the higher value. It's quite a, it's quite a punchy orange. So there is a lot of red. It's like a red heavy orange. <laughs> wow. And it's so funny. Um, a good friend of mine was watching the video a couple weeks ago. Hi, Jen. I know you're watching. Um, and she was saying how she could tell there were moments that I wanted to tell jokes that I held back on especially when I was talking about the brown my brown recipe <laughs> it's so hard I want to make so many jokes I'll wait till I'm monetized and then I'll feel safer to really let loose and <laughs> things will just get weirder and weirder 
Um, but yeah, this pumpkin, great little sort of heart-shaped pumpkin. And this is an example of really needing to wait for it to dry because it's quite thick because um, I'm covering the green and I'm covering green with orange. So there's, you know, this risk of that green coming through and, and in some ways it could look cool. Like it, it depends again on what look you're going for. Sometimes it's nice to have a little bit of that background color come through to give a cohesion to the whole composition, but in this case, I'm checking to see. You can see when it's shiny, you know it's wet, so I'm waiting. Do 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 do. What am I doing there? I don't even know what I was doing, but waiting, getting rid of crumbs, <laughs> waving my <laughs> cardboard in front of it, trying to trying to dry it off. <laughs> Why did I leave that in? I don't know. So you could see that that's that's a technique right there is waving something over your work to dry it off. You can also use a little blow dryer but my blow dryer broke down because I've been using it so much for drying paint. And I won't use my hair blow dryer because it's way too powerful. Um, you might be able to hear my neighbor upstairs flushing their toilet. <laughs> okay, so we're now moving on to some of the highlights, or not the highlights, but some of the details on the pumpkin. So again, I'm creating a deep dark green using black and yellow. Um, instead of straight up black, because if you've watched my videos, I talk about how very rarely do you want to use uh, black. Just it, it, It's so flat. It doesn't really hold much depth. Um, so it's nice to create like a, a blue black or a green black. In this case, these, uh, these details, green black makes a lot of sense because of the background and because the fact that the pumpkin has, you know, vines around it. And pumpkins are green before they turn orange, so yeah, it just makes more sense. I know what I'm talking about, <laughs> I promise. Um, okay, the details, oh, just a little shadow there around her neckline and under her little armpit and around her her chest to just to, to emphasize those shapes. And now we're making our mixture for the magic, magic mixture. This is probably my favorite part of the painting. Um, and we need some true red and we have some primary magenta um, and adding the primary white to make pink. And I'm getting rid of the excess because I'm gonna do dry brush. And I, I practice first and then I go for it. Whoosh, and I give a really nice swoosh. Man, I think that's like the best swoosh I've ever done. And I started with such little pressure near the tip of her magic wand so that it was be really, really thin. And then I like press down and I swoosh. And doing this again because there's a few swooshes. A little flick of the wrist there. Going back the other way because I can see that the dry brush, you know, it, it's located in different directions, if that makes sense. So I gotta like swoosh in different directions. A lot of solution going on. Oh, I just love this. I feel like this is a, the magic part here. Dry brush. It's it's it is very successful, and I, I think it's because I really have been practicing. Um, there, I'm rolling my brush, and this is my new Windsor Newton. I can tell because the bristles are shorter, but I decide to use it for the little magical fairy dust spots. Um, and, uh, yeah, you can't really see what I'm doing here, but I'm just doing little dots. You know, dots are, are, this is a skill as well, is to make the dot round and not, um, angled or sort of like a, a little line. You'd rather, you want to have a dot, not a line. So it's, um, angle of your brush, like having your brush pretty much straight up and down helps with that. And then doing these little starbursts. I love doing starbursts. This is... Um, I made this, uh, when was it last, I did this last week and I had just done these little kind of starbursts on someone's nails and I was like, oh, now I, th I feel like I, I really dialed in my starbursts because I had to do them on these tiny little nails. So yeah, take some patience, but super cute. And we're wrapping up here. So just as I'm finishing off um, the starbursts and magical fairy dust, uh, I'm going to mention for any of you who are still watching, 
that please let me know if there is a piece of concept art or an artist that you want me to uh, try out. I have a, a, you know, a backlog of, of pieces that I want to do, but I'm always open to suggestions. And uh, yeah, I love getting feedback about what works and what you'd like to learn more about. And there we go. It's all done. Yay. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out the courses that I'm teaching this summer. Um, and yeah, try this one out. I feel like this is probably the easiest one I've done so far. And it's really adorable. So there we go. Cinderella about to go to the ball. Boop, magic wand. <laughs> Okay, everyone, have a great day and don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. All right, enjoy. Go watch Cinderella and I'll see you all soon.